And the idea for why this works if it is prime is actually a pretty advanced idea in math from number theory. And it, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that, that relates to remainder. So I want to show you um, something about the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 mod 5. Mm. Okay? Yeah. All right, now, are you ready? Yes. For something incredible? Yes. Okay. So, numbers mod 5 all have something called inverses. So, one inverse, multiplicative inverses, you multiply and you get one, right? So, one times one is one. What number can I multiply 2 by to get a number that has a remainder of 1 mod 5? Well, you can multiply it by 1 half. Yeah, but I don't have a 1 half. I only have the numbers 1, ah. 2, 3, and 4. Um, you can it's multiply 3. 3, because then I get 6, which is a remainder of yeah. 1 mod 5. Okay. Now, what number can I multiply 4 by? Well, multiply it by... Can you, like, multiply it by two numbers? Uh, no, only one number. Only allowed to um, multiply it by one number. You need to get a remainder of... One. one. You need to multiply it by some number in here to get a remainder of one. Well, what if you multiply it by itself? Ah, four times but four. But you 16, which is work. Yeah, which is 16. So all these numbers are, have things that are called inverses. Okay? Yeah. But there's another amazing way of looking at this which is, uh, I can also say this is minus 2 and 4 is the same as minus 1 mm. on 5. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what happens is, in this very interesting scenario, when I have a prime, this is only true when I have a prime that all the numbers have inverses. Yeah. Okay? When I have a prime, and I write 1, 2, 3, all the way up to p minus 1, and I'm going to assume just for simplicity that this is an odd prime. All right. Because we already checked that it worked for 2. Yeah. Right? I'm going to have exactly the same thing happen. I'm going to have 1 by itself, 2 is going to pair with some other number. 3 is going to pair with some other number. And all the numbers are going to pair up except for this last one that's already equal to minus 1. Yeah. Okay? And now when I multiply them all together, I get these, these things all pairing up. 1, remember 2 times 3? Yep. 2 times 3 was 6, which was the same as? 1. 1. So all these things pair up to be multiplied together to be 1. Yeah. Times this last one, which is a minus 1. So well, but you're multiplying it by itself, right? Or in the usually... No, because I remember to, to f evaluate p minus 1 factorial, I take 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 oh. times 5. And when I'm looking at the remainders, I'm saying I can always do the multiplication in a slightly different order where the remainder always stays 1. Yeah. Until I get to the very last number when the remainder is minus 1. But up to then, the product has been 1. Yeah. And I multiply by 1 more, minus 1, and I get minus 1. So that tells me that p minus 1 factorial is minus 1 mod p. So when you add 1 to it, it'll be 0. Congruent to 0 mod p. Yeah. Hmm. So how about that? Cool. That's why it works. That's why it works. So if it's not a prime, it doesn't work. If it is a prime, it, it does work. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So that means, by the way, since it's not a, if it's not a prime and it doesn't work, that means if it does work, it has to be a prime. Hmm. So that is really neat. And so the the joke of the, where this came up is, you can tell that 2017, the year we're in right now, yeah. is prime because 2017 is a divisor of 2016 factorial plus one. That's how you can tell that 2017 is prime. Do you think this is an efficient way to tell that 2017 no. is prime? No. Why not? I mean, what's 2016 factorial? I don't know, maybe we could ask Mathematica. Hmm. What's the best way you know to check if something is prime? Well, 
You can check up to the square root okay. here, which you... is that'll be not that big actually, because like this is um like twenty five hundred is fifty squared. Okay, it's not too much. Right, so I, I only have to check. So there, you you could say I only have to check the primes up to fifty. It's not it's very many. Not too many. What do I have to do to evaluate 2016 factorial? You have to multiply 2016 up to 15 up to Yeah. yeah. Is so that the, more than 50 numbers? Yeah. Quite a lot more. Quite a lot more, yeah. So this is a fun way to learn. This is a fun theorem. Yeah. But it's not super useful. Yeah. Like you don't want to check if like a 10 digit number is prime. It's only useful for, for small numbers. Yeah, even for small numbers it's not that useful. But it's a fun fact and it's called Wilson's theorem. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Good job, guys.